Hey, hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to take a look at Headwinds A330 for Microsoft Flight Simulator. This is going to be version .103, just released today, April 15th, 2022. We're going to do a short little hop today and take a look at some of the basics of flying the A330 if you've never jumped in the cockpit before. So if you think that interests you, then stay tuned for today's episode of 2020 Flight Simmers. Welcome back everyone to the cockpit of the new Headwind A330 for Microsoft Flight Simulator. Links for the download will be in the description, so be sure to go down there and check that out. While you're down there, make sure to hit that subscribe, tick that little bell, and smash on that thumbs up button. It is greatly appreciated. So for today's flight, we are going to be leaving Pensacola International on our way to Armstrong New Orleans International. We're going to be kind of doing a little bit of a review for the Headwind A330 and going over some of the new things that are added. Now keep in mind that we are not going to be following procedures on today's flight. We're only going to be showing some of the basics on how to get this thing up and running the MCDU, as well as some features of the EFB. So, without any further ado, let's get this thing started up and get some power going. So the first thing we need to do is to hop to the overhead panel, hit the battery buttons, get that on, and then we can come down here and tick on the external power. We're going to then come up here to the IRSs and get all three of these on. Next, we're going to come down and hit the crew supply, hit the beacon, and we're going to turn on all of our fuel pumps. You probably wouldn't normally do this at this point because we're not going to be starting up the APU just yet, but I don't want to forget anything, so I'm just going to do that now. Next, down at the bottom here, we can turn on some seatbelts, the no smoking, and we can turn on some backlighting for the overhead panel. We can also turn on the emergency lights. We also have some dome lights here. All right, so once we got all that done, let's go ahead and get some lights adjusted down here in the cockpit. So over here on the left, we can turn these light switches up and that will adjust your pilot displays. For your autopilot, we have two knobs underneath of that. We can just roll those to the right and that will give us some illumination for our autopilot. Hopping on down below on the center console, we have the eCam, so we can turn up the lighting for our eCams and one more we have the backlighting for the pedestal here as well as some floodlights we're not going to turn those on right now awesome so now that all the lights are up to par let's hop over to the efb and take a look at some of the cool features we have here while this is loading keep in mind that headwind is using flybywires.74 version of all the avionics stuff so we're not going to have all the latest and updated avionics like vnav and things like that but this is going to add a significant improvement to the Headwind A330. We are using a SimBrief flight plan today. If you're unfamiliar with SimBrief, I'll post a link below. You can check out a video we've done on that. So to load your SimBrief flight plan into the EFB, we just need to come down and hit on the From SimBrief button. If it is your first time in the aircraft, there's a couple things that we need to get set up first. So let's go through that right now. Down at the lower left hand corner, we have the settings button. We're going to left click on that. There's a couple options in here that we want to go through. Again, we're going to skim through a lot of this because it's not really pertinent, but be sure to go through all the different options and check the things that you'd like. In the aircraft configuration menu, we have the weight units. I recommend to set those depending on what part of the country you're in, as well as options for pack signs. Over in the sim options, these are probably the most important. This is where we're going to be able to set our IRS align time, our DMC self-test time, as well as our throttle quadrant detents. This is the biggest improvement, I think, in the Headwind A330, is that we can now calibrate our Bravo, Velocity, or Satec throttle quadrants to the aircraft. If you are a person that just wants to get up and running in the aircraft, and you don't want to sit on the ground for that long, I recommend to turn these into the instant mode. So let's go through the calibration features on the A330. To do that, we're just going to left click on the calibrate button and it will now bring up the calibration menu. Roll up and down on the throttles to get them to show up here. And now we're going to go through the menus. First, we're going to check out two of the options at the very top. If we are using a Bravo throttle quadrant or velocity, most likely, your reverser is not going to be on the same axis as your throttle. 
and you are probably going to be using a reverser handle or a reverser button. Next to that we have independent axis. If you are using only one throttle axis to control both of your engines, you want to make sure that you untick this option. If you are using two throttle axes, then you want to make sure this option is ticked. Next we want to set all of the detents for our throttle quadrant. So the first thing that I like to do is to set my idle and take off. To do that, we want to make sure that the idle is highlighted. Also, if you take a note down here below the idle, the reverse idle and reverse full is not highlighted. That's another way to know that you've got the reverser button here checked correctly at the top. So what you want to do is now set your throttles to idle and then hit the set from throttle buttons. Next, we're going to go to full takeoff and then again, we're going to click on the takeoff button and then hit set from throttle. The next two items on here for flex and your climb detents, this is kind of all up to you. If you're using an Airbus throttle quadrant that has those detents already in it, this makes it very nice because you can set your flex and climb to those specific detents. For somebody with a Bravo throttle quadrant, well, you can just pull back on the throttle until you get to the point of where you want your flex to be. Once you get to that point, you can just hit set from throttle and make sure that the flex was highlighted. Next, we're gonna do the same thing for the climb and reduce our throttle until we get to our climb position. Hit the climb button and then hit set from throttle. Once we get done with that, we can hit the apply and save at the bottom and it will save all of our information into the EFB. Next, there's a couple other things. If you are using SimBrief, you have to make sure that your SimBrief information is programmed into the fly pad. To do that, click on the ATSU button and down here at the SimBrief username, you're gonna enter your username, not the pilot ID. Above here, we have a couple other options. Again, you can go through these. We have the audio panel and the fly pad panel, and this we can adjust the brightness. Over here on the left-hand side, we have a couple other menus here. We're gonna go through those real quick. The little clipboard menu is going to bring up all the information that we imported from our SimBrief flight plan. This will give us an overview. The next is the OFP tab, and this will bring up all of the flight plan information. To the right of that, we have the fuel tab, and here's where we can set the correct fuel for the aircraft. So you can go up here and adjust your fuels in the weight and balance, as well as your passenger and payload in the aircraft. There is a way to do that in the McDo, and we'll go over that as well in a brief moment. So we can exit out of that to know what fuel we need to set in the aircraft, well, that's pretty easy because SimBrief has already done that for us. If we go over here to the OFP tab and scroll down a little bit, we can see the block fuel for today's flight is 24037. Again, we can go back over to the fuel, highlight in here. We can use our keyboard at this time and type in 24037, and then we can just hit the play button. Below the play button, we'll have the estimated time that it's going to take to refuel, you can also change that down here on the lower portion of the tablet. If you want it quick, just hit instant, just like that, and automatically we are now defueled and we are properly set up for today's flight. Back over here on the left, we can go down to the truck tab, and here's where we can activate any of our ground crew, as well as call for the tug, change pushback. Next underneath of that, we have the calculator, and this is going to be fantastic for calculating top of descent, as well as landing. Under the landing tab, we're not gonna get into this today, but you can play around with this, entering your airport information, and it will give a lot of good information. But the top of descent calculator is gonna be very important in the ver this version of the A330, as we do not have a VNAV option available at this time. We'll get into more of how to use this once we get in the air. Below the calculator, we have the charts and navigation tabs. If you are a Navigraph subscriber, then this is where you would probably pull up any of your charts. One thing to note with the EFB for the A330 is that because they are using flybywires.74 version, that you wanna make sure that when you are not using the EFB, that you do turn it off because it will give you somewhat of an FPS hit. Great, so now that we've gone through that, let's take a look through the McDo and check some of the features that we can scroll through there. So one of the first things that we wanna do here is go over to the options tab, and then we want to go to the AOC menu. Under the AOC menu, this is where we're able to enter our SimBrief, either username or pilot ID. 
I will say that when I entered my username, it did not register. I had to go back in and change to the pilot ID. So once we have that done, we can hit the return button and get back to our main menu. If you do not want to hit the back button to get to the main menu, you can also use the quick button down here on the McDo for the MCDU menu button, and it will bring you back to this menu. Next, we want to head down to the ATSU menu and head over to the AOC menu. Next, we want to head to the init press, tap on that button. Here's where we can import our data from Simbrief. So we just want to hit the init data request and it will import everything from our Simbrief flight plan. Once that's done, we can hit back on the AOC menu. The next menu that we're going to be talking about here is something that you don't really have to use if you don't want to. If you want to add that layer of realism, then surely use the next menu. If not, then you can skip this menu altogether. But we're going to go through it real quick. Now remember I told you that you can easily add and adjust any of your fuel as well as your passenger and payload through the InSim Payload Manager. We also have the availability to do that within the McDo. So we just need to click on the WB, stands for Weights and Balances, and here we can also send the request. When we do, it will pull in all the information for today's flight, as well as our block fuel, taxi fuel, and trip fuel. We can also check up here on the ECAM menu and make sure that the fuel on board is set properly. Next, if we head over here to the next menu, here's where we can allow the McDo to kind of board all of our passengers for us. Again, we need to hit the OFP request button and it will pull in all of our passenger data, payload, zero fuel weight, and zero fuel weight center of gravity. We can hit the start boarding button and as you can see, now it will start boarding all of our passengers once everybody does get loaded in, all of these will turn green. Again, if you don't want to use this, you do not have to use this and you can use the InSim Payload Manager. Okay, so now that we've got that started, next we're just going to hit on the init button on the McDo. That'll bring up this page here and we can enter in a flight number. You don't really have to if you don't want to. We're just going to enter a random number and we can enter the cost index and the cruise altitude. The cruising altitude for today's flight is going to be 26,000 feet, and the way we're going to enter that here is FL for flight level 260, and we're going to tap on the soft key. Above the cruise altitude, we have the cost index, and we're going to find this information on our Simbrief flight plan information. We want to come down to the clipboard. We click over here on OFP, and the first thing at the very top here, it says CI. That is going to be our cost index for today's flight. So we just want to put 56 where it says cost index. Type in 56, hit the soft key, and we've got that set up. Move to the next menu, and here's where we can enter the zero fuel weight and the block fuel. Now we know the block fuel for today's flight is going to be 24 tons. So down here we can just put 24.0 and enter that. The zero fuel weight, on the other hand, we are not going to tick as of right now, and that's only because if we go back to our weight and balance menu and click over, we can see that we have not finished loading all of our passengers. And if we take a look here at the gross weight, we can see that the weight is changing as the passengers load. So if you are using the weight and balance feature on this, you definitely do not want to enter the zero fuel yet make sure that all of your passengers are loaded first. All right, so now we're gonna hit the flight plan button. We're now gonna enter the departure and destination information into our flight plan. So what we wanna do is to head back over to the EFB tab, and we're just gonna scroll down to our flight plan. All right, so here's our flight plan for today. KPNS, runway 08, direct to GPT, the slide to arrival, into KMSY for runway 11. So now we can come back to the McDo and go to our departure airport, which is KPNS, and just left click on the soft key. Left click on the departure soft key, and here's where we can enter our departure runway. At this point, you probably want to already have contacted ATC to get your departure clearance, and they will tell you what runway you're gonna be leaving on. But again, for today's flight, we are going to pre-plan all this. So we're gonna hit runway 08. We are not using any SID 
and we can just hit the insert button. Great, so now that the departure is done, let's move down to the destination and enter some information here. Next, we wanna hit the arrival tab, and here is where we can enter our approach. We're coming in on the ILS-11. After that, we can enter the star information. To scroll through the stars, we can just use the up and down arrows to go down to the slide two. We can highlight and click. We are using the Voodoo VIA, and we are using the GPT transition. Now, before we hit anything at this point, you're gonna notice that GPT is already highlighted up here. So at this point, you don't need to do anything other than hit insert. If for some reason, you do not wanna use the GPT transition and you wanna use the SJI, here's the process for doing that. You wanna come over here and hit the SJI button. At that point, you can hit insert. Now, one thing that you will have probably noticed that if we go back to the arrival, you can see that the star and the transition did not get properly input. So what you wanna do is to, again, re-enter the information, ILS 11, slide two, voodoo, and now you're gonna see the transition of the SJI is populated here. At this point, you would wanna hit insert and it will insert that transition. But we don't wanna use the SJI, we're coming in on the GPT, so again, we're gonna hit that soft key and you can see the entire star and transition just got erased. Again, we're gonna go through this one more time. Hit the ILS 11. Scroll down to the slide two. The voodoo. And we can see the GPT transition is now entered. Do not wanna hit any of these soft keys at this point other than the insert. We can hit insert and it will now put that information into our McDo. Again, just to verify that everything is entered properly, we can hit the soft key, hit the arrival, and you can see all the information's entered. Now, if anybody has any questions along the way here today, make sure to post that down below in the comments, and I'll get right back to you. Again, we're not going through all the different features that the McDo has to offer, but only a basis to get you started. Okay, so now that we've finished up with the departure and destination information, we can now make sure that we have no errors in our flight plan. So to do that, we want to display our flight plan on one of our pilot displays here. To get that to populate, we're gonna head up topside, turn us into plan mode. We can also turn the range out a little bit to 20. And when you do that, you're gonna notice that your radar over here, so to speak, is gonna change a little bit. Now what we can do while we are on the flight plan menu of the McDo is we can use the up and down arrows to scroll through the different waypoints and you will see that corresponding waypoint show up here on this little radar screen. So we're just gonna hit the up arrow and it will scroll through all the different waypoints along the way. And as you can see, it doesn't look like we have any errors in our flight plan and it looks pretty good. At this point, this is where if you had an error or something that was backtracking or something that looked like a lightning bolt in here because it just had you going everywhere, this is where you're now able to come down here and make your changes. All right, so once we have verified that our flight plan looks correct, we can come back up topside, turn us back into arc mode. I like to put me on 40 or 20. Now that we have verified everything on our flight plan and we have no errors, we can also come and make sure that all of our passengers have loaded so we can see the gross weight is no longer changing and we can check the fuel on board to make sure that's set. We can go back to the MCDU menu and also verify that the weights and balances have stopped. And it looks like everything is good to go here. At this point, we can go to the performance tab and before we can enter some of the V speeds, we just need to enter our flap setting that we're gonna be using for today. So we're gonna be using flap number two. Then we're just gonna hit two, the soft key, and it will enter that flap. Below that, we can enter a flex temp. If you know your flex temp, you can enter that below. Again, you do not have to enter that. Over here on the left, we have our transition altitude. And for us in the US, that's gonna be 18,000 feet. And then above that, we can now enter the V speeds by just double clicking on each of the tabs. As you can see, we'll input all of our V speeds for us. And at the bottom here, we can then go to the next phase of the flight. Once we are airborne and almost to our approach or destination, 
we will then have to enter all of the approach or destination information here as well. We're not there yet, so we're not going to worry about that just yet. The very last thing we want to do is hit is hit the init button and we can finish up with this menu. Then we want to come down and hit the arrow to move to the next screen. And here's where you should be able to enter your zero fuel weight, but I've been having a little issue. So it's supposed to work if I just tap on this button, your zero fuel weight should come at the bottom along with the center of gravity. And if we tap it one more time, it should input that information in here. But unfortunately, it is not working properly at this time. And I think that might be due to this update because I did not have this happen before. So even down here in the fuel prepared menu, if we try to do the same thing, it just says that um, entry out of range. So most likely that's something they're going to fix on a future update. Or if it's something I'm doing wrong, let me know down in the comments section. Again, you would have probably already contacted ATC to get your clearance and to get your climbing altitude and your departure runway. So we're just gonna enter some information in the autopilot as if ATC gave us this information. So I'm just gonna set my initial altitude for our 26,000 feet. Over here on the heading, you can also set this to your runway heading. And because we're gonna be taking off on runway 08, the runway heading should be thereabouts 080. Great, so once that's done, I'm just going to hit the CSTR button. You would also want to make sure that you get your barometric pressure. And because we are not using live weather, our bearer reading for today is going to be 2 niner, niner 2. On the barometric pressure, this is where we also have the other option that we can switch into helipascals by just tapping on the inner rotator here. And we can see that that has changed for us. The other thing I wanted to show you is down here on the ECAM, uh, menu we have a couple different options down here we can check between engine bleed pressure electric hydraulic all right so let's move on to the next step and get the apu started so we can start generating our own power now that we've entered all the information into our autopilot the mcdo and the efb tablet so we're going to hop back up top side we're going to come down to the apu we're going to hit on wait a couple seconds and then we're going to hit the start button we're also going to come up and turn on the APU bleed, and that's going to allow us to start the engines. Once the APU is started and is available, you will see the avail light show up right down here on the start button, and that lets us know we are all ready to go and we can turn off the external power. Then we're just going to come down and turn on some of our lights. And now we can get the engines ready to go. I think this airplane's a little too big for this airport, but uh, we'll, we'll make it work. All right, awesome. So we got our pushback done. Now we can get some of these engines going. Now, usually you would probably want to start these engines on your pushback. Again, we're not following any procedures. So let's get these bad boys up and running. To do that, we're just gonna come down here on the center pedestal and turn us into start mode. And then we can come down and hit the engine number two switch. All right, and then we're just going to monitor engine number two. And once engine number two does stabilize, then we can go ahead and proceed with starting engine number one. Once it is ready, you'll see the avail light light up above it. So now we're good to go with starting engine number one. Again, we're going to come down, flip the engine number one switch. Once both engines stabilize, then we can come down and turn us into normal mode now. At our speed brake, so we're just going to arm the speed brake and we're gonna set us down to notch number two for today's takeoff. Over here on the right, we have the transponder so we can turn it into auto mode. And over here, we can turn into TA or TARA 
And here's where you can enter your uh, squawk code. Over here on the left hand side, this is our predictive wind shear, so we can turn that on at this point. We take a look at the center ECAM menu. We have a takeoff checklist here that we need to make sure everything is set properly. So the auto brake we need to set into max. That's going to be right over here, so we can just click that into max. We can make sure that all the cabin signs are on and checked. They are. The spoilers are armed, and we're going to set the flaps to config, and we have done that already. You can also test this and just hit the config button and it will make sure that everything is set up for you. If not, you'll get a blaring alarm at you and say, hey, you got something out of whack. Now we no longer need the APU, so we can hop back up topside and shut the APU off. We can turn the APU bleed off and we can turn the APU master off as well. All right, so it looks like everything up here is pretty good. I'm also going to turn the landing lights on now so I don't forget and the taxi lights. Oh, the only other menu that I did not really talk about here with the McDo is the navigation radio menu. So if you click on that, here's where we're able to enter our VOR frequencies as well as the ILS frequency. The computer will auto populate the ILS frequency for us or you can enter that yourself, but we'll just see how this does once we get up in the air. As again, I have not tested this version, so uh, you're seeing it first time, just like I am. You can also come back down here to the ECAM menu and hit the APU switch, and just make sure the APU has turned off, and it has. Great. Now, before we get going, I just wanted to show everybody some information that you're going to see on the screen here. Over here on the left is going to be our speed. Our V speeds are over here in blue, and our rotate, I believe, and takeoff speed is going to be right there in pink. Our set altitude is going to be right here, as well as our current altitude is going to be right here. To the right of that is our vertical speed indicator, and then below that is our Q&H or our barometric pressure, as well as we have a compass ticker on the bottom. At the top is going to be all of the autopilot enunciators, so we're going to see that happen as we go. Okay, so it looks like everything's ready to go. We're just going to increase throttle to either flex or takeoff and rotate positive rate gear is up come up on one notch of flaps 500. all right so now at this point if we look at our radar here we can see that our flight path is kind of behind us so we can start our turn right now and pull up our last stage of flaps We can now bring us down into climb as well. When we bring our throttles back into climb, it will now enable the auto throttle to take over. If you want to change your speed, all you need to do is come up here to the speed, hit the down arrow, and now you can adjust your auto throttle to whatever you want. If you hit the center on this again in the up arrow, it'll put us back into manage speed mode and the auto throttle will take over. You don't have to have the autopilot on for the auto throttle to take effect. Keep that in mind. Let's put us into autopilot mode. So we just come over here and hit the autopilot button over here. And on the heading, we need to make sure that this is in autopilot mode. So we just want to hit the center of that heading and make sure that we hit the up arrow on it and it'll put us into navigation mode. If you press down on the arrow, it'll put us into heading mode. So now that we have our altitude selected, we can also select our managed altitude mode. By pressing up on the altitude knob, we can see this little dot here, and that has now put us into managed altitude mode. Quite honestly, that's pretty much all there is to getting this thing off the ground. I mean, it's, it's pretty simple. Um, let me know what your thoughts are of the A330 here. I think it's, it's a great, great piece of uh, machinery. Okay, so now that we're on our way to our cruising altitude of 26,000 feet, let's take a look at that EFB tab and take a look at the top of descent calculator again. So as we can see here, it is calculating our current speed and what we need to do here is hit the sync button and it will sync our current altitude. It will continually sync that no matter what altitude we're at. Underneath of that, we have our target altitude. So this is gonna be our first descent altitude. So the first flight restriction that we need to hit, this is what we're gonna enter here. So if we come back down to the McDo, all of our flight restrictions will be over here on the right-hand side. 
we could just continually scroll down until we get to our first flight restriction of 7,000 feet and that's what we're going to enter into our EFB. So we just enter 7,000 with your keyboard, make sure you click off of it, and this will tell us about how many miles we need to start our descent before that target altitude of 7,000 feet. Now you're going to notice that this mileage is going to start increasing as we climb up to 26,000, but that is normal. So now that we are above 10,000 feet, we can come up top and turn off some landing lights. And we can also turn off those nose lights too. We don't really need those. And uh, with that, we're pretty much set to go with everything up top. If we look at the autopilot panel, all of these have a little dot on it. So if you see any of these with a little dot, that means that portion of the autopilot is in managed mode. Again, if you wanna switch between managed mode and manual mode, just highlight over the center of the knob and you're either going to press up or down. Hey, if this video is helping you out today, consider going down below and hitting the subscribe and ticking that little bell. Smash on that thumbs up button, it's greatly appreciated. Once we get above 18,000 feet, something you're going to notice on our pilot display is our Q&H is flashing for us. That's kind of a reminder that we need to turn our barometric pressure into standard mode. To do that, we can just highlight over the center of the knob, make sure we have the down arrow, and hit that button and it will put us into standard. We can also see standard lit up on our display. All right, so let's hop back down to the McDo and check and see if our nav frequencies have populated for us. So we just hit the rad nav button, and there we go. We can see that our ILS frequency is already programmed in along with the course for that runway. Now, if for some reason that one of your throttles is a little out of whack, so say they're not synced up down here, so you can see one's uh, above the other one. If you look up here on our autopilot enunciators here, um, I think it's, I think you could call it autopilot, but if you look over here at the enunciators, we can see here that one of the levers is not in climb and uh, it's set in manual throttle. So make sure if you see that, that just gives you an indication that your throttles are not set correctly, so just double check that. Once you do get them set properly, you will see the speed highlight back up again, and you'll be good to go. All right, so if we take a look at the uh, McDo again, we can see here that it's asking us to enter our destination data. So we can hit the clear button at the bottom and we want to hit the performance button to take us to that data. Again, we want to hit the next phase, next phase, and here we can enter our approach information. We can get a lot of this from our EFB tab. So let's hop over there real quick and go up to the first windsock here. And that'll give us all the METAR data for the arrival airport. We are not using live weather today, but I'm just going to input this just to show you how it's done. So for our arrival airport, our Q&H is 1018, our temperature is 25 degrees, and our wind speed is over here. So let's enter this information in the McDo real quick. So we can enter the Q&H is 1018, the temperature is 25, the wind is 120, and you do a little slash at 15. And then we're going to set our altitude or our decision altitude for 200 feet. And we're going to put that for the radio altitude. And that's going to calculate our altitude from the ground up and not using the barometric pressure. Over here for the trans altitude, we want to make sure that we put 18,000 in there. And now we have finished all the destination information. In the center here, it gives us some speeds that we should be attaining. So at the outer marker, we should be at 222, and we should start slowing down to 187. Full flaps are at 153, and our approach speed is 148. That's what we should hit the ground. Let's hop back over to the EFB, and we can see here that we need 60 miles to make our descent down to 7,000 feet. So if we take a look at our flight plan again, we can see that 7,000 feet, eh, we got quite a bit of time to go 
uh, before we hit that. So we're just going to make sure that right around 60 miles out, so most likely once we get around the slid waypoint, we will start our descent down to the voodoo waypoint down to 7,000 feet. Now if we zoom out a little bit on our little map here, we can see here that we have a little, it looks like a D here, and I think that is going to be our top of descent right before that uh, slide waypoint, just where I thought we would have to start making our descent. So uh, that kind of uh, cross checks with what the EFB tells us. So that's perfect. Along with all the other altitude restrictions are here as well. So that's going to be very, very helpful for us to make our approach. All right, so I'll bring everybody back once we get to our top of descent and start the procedure for our approach. So we're just about at our top of descent. There's a couple things that we need to do before we get there. So let's go over those real quick. So we're gonna come over here to the autopilot and we're just gonna tune this down to 7,000 feet, our first flight restriction. To maintain our current altitude, it won't do anything until we activate the manage vertical speed or if we activate vertical speed, either one. All right, so it looks like we just passed our top of descent marker. So all we need to do now is to come over here and to hit the up arrow on the very center of the altitude, hit the up arrow and it will put us into managed, uh, managed vertical speed mode and it will start taking us down in our descent. Hey, I just want to let everybody know that we do have a Facebook page. Links for that Facebook page is down in the description as well. If you'd like to join in the conversation at 2020 Flight Simmers, go down there and click on the Facebook group. We'd love to have you aboard. And if you do have any suggestions for any future videos, Please post those down below in the comments as well. While we're on our descent, I just thought I would go over a couple other options here on the autopilot display that you may not know what they are. Underneath of the altitude, we have the X EXPED button. That's going to expedite our descent. So if you hit that button, it's going to put us into a nosedive almost. To the right of that, we have our approach button, and we will be using that on today's flight. And over here to the left, we have the localizer lock button and we will also be using that on today's flight. Yeah, it looks like we're gonna be landing somewhere right over there. Wow. I'll tell you what though, this sim never ceases to amaze me and the graphics are just amazing in this. Speaking about graphics, I'm gonna be making a graphical video for VR, so any of you VR users out there, stay tuned for that video. I'm gonna do a video to try to help you get the smoothest VR, especially if you're using the Reverb G2. Because I've noticed with other headsets like the Valve, I didn't have this stuttering problem as I do in the Reverb G2. And I've figured out a way to help eliminate that. So I'm going to go over some of my NVIDIA settings in a future video. While we're on the VR topic, if you are a glasses wearer, I have a link down in the description for some VR lenses that you can get prescribed for your headset. There's also a discount code there that you can get some money off. So check that out as well, because it may very well help you out and you don't have to try to fumble around. You can just slide these inserts right over the lenses and it makes it so much better of an experience. And uh, not to mention, I think it's only 10 or 15 day turnaround to get those lenses to your door. So if we look at the flight plan, it looks like we have 14 miles left till we got to be at 7,000. And if we look over here on the EFB, it's going to take us 29 miles to get to 7,000. So that tells us that we are a little bit behind the ball here. So we need to go down just a little bit faster. So what I'm going to do at this point is I'm going to hit the expedite button and you're going to see what that's going to do. You remember the little red button? Yeah. Push the little red button. And you may want to put on a seatbelt. So now if we take a look at our vertical speed now that we hit the expedite, we are really, really diving. So because of that, what I want to do is come down here and put some speed brakes on to help slow us down a little bit. Now, as you can see, we are really hauling butt to get down to 7,000 feet. We are full out on the air brakes to try to slow us down some. And this is what can happen if you don't start your descent soon enough. 
So if we look at our next altitude here, we have is 4,000 feet. So what we want to do is we're going to come over here and we're just going to put 4,000 feet. And we're also going to make sure we are in manage mode. As you can see, we're coming up on that 7,000 foot mark, and I'm pretty sure the plane will not descend below 7,000 feet until we pass. Now that we had just passed that, okay, yep, so there we go. So now the plane is going to descend us down to 4,000. Now that we're on our way for our approach, we can turn on the localizer portion, so we can hit the LS button here. And that's going to bring us up the localizer information at the bottom, as well as a glide slope over here on the right, once it has populated that for us. At this point, we can go ahead and activate the localizer mode, and the plane will now line us up on the localizer. We're not yet going to hit the approach mode, because the glide slope has not populated for us, and we also want to make sure that we are established, on the localizer before we activate the approach mode. Now we can hit the down arrow on the speed button and we can adjust the speeds accordingly. Again, if we go down to the performance tab, we can see we wanna be at 222. So I'm just gonna make sure that our speed tab is, that our speed is set for 222, which it is. Down here, the glide slope has populated so at this point we can come up here and hit the approach button and it will now capture that glide slope for us. Now we can lower the landing gear. We can put down one notch of flaps. And the plane is now on descent down to our approach into the runway. So it's really pretty much that easy. I mean, it can't get any easier than uh, the Airbus. We can also go ahead and pull back all the speed brakes and make sure that is armed. Once we have activated the localizer in the approach mode, it will no longer follow any altitudes that we put into the autopilot. It will now just be following the glide slope and it will only follow that glide slope when it is lit up as glide slope and localizer. To the right, we can see here that we are in the Cat 3 single. We can also activate auto land. To activate the auto land feature on this bad boy, we just need to hit the autopilot 2 button and it will now activate the auto land feature for the Airbus. So once we pass the outer marker, we're then going to set our speed down to 187. And then once we near the runway, we are then going to set it to 153 for full flaps and then try to attain 148 once we hit touchdown. So let's see how this is gonna to work today. I don't know that we've hit the outer marker because we should have a little enunciator populate here that tell us we've hit the outer marker. So let's see if that happens. We should be just about up on the outer marker shortly. Okay, we see the OM displayed on our panel here, so we have just hit the outer marker, and we can now bring our throttle back, and we're gonna bring that back to about 187. And we also wanna make sure that as we are decreasing, um, as we are decreasing speed, you're also bringing back your flaps. Looks like the plane has leveled off here. Yeah, looks like the plane has gotten down to our 187. When we get a little bit closer, I'm then gonna go ahead and turn this down to 153 and then activate full flaps. At this point, you probably already wanted to have your landing lights on. I know somebody's gonna yell at me down in the comments. Again, don't kill me here. <laughs> All right, so we're almost to the runway. So once we get just a little bit closer, yep, I'm gonna now put us back to 153 and activate full flaps. We'll put us on 147, which should be our landing speed. And if we look at the ticker tape down here on the left, we are coming in perfect.
All right, ladies and gentlemen, I think that's going to finish us up for today. If you have any questions, please post it down below in the comments section. I want to thank everybody for joining us on today's episode. Make sure to hit that subscribe, tick that little bell, and smash on that thumbs up button. To all my flight simmer friends around the world, keep the blue side up, and we'll see you all in the next one. Thanks for watching, everybody.